Uh, I wanted to uh, ask a question um, on, uh, I wrote it down, uh, basically uh, a proper balance between um, work flowing out of a changed heart and not in asceticism or um, just thinking that if we mortify, you know, if you take like Colossians 3, uh, verse 5, you know, and, and the list that Paul gives or whatever, what's that proper balance uh, between um, the indicatives and the imperatives in the gospel or in the in Pauline letters? Well, that's a that's a that's a that's a big area. I mean, um, you you quoted the one text. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. Um, I mean, that's that's pretty much parallel to the really strong uh, statement from uh, John. In 1 John chapter 2, if anyone uh, loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I mean, that's, right. that's about as strong as you're, as you're going to get, especially when you, when you consider what we could possibly identify as love of the world. Uh, there's, there's a lot of that amongst uh, many of us, and so you, you really wonder exactly how far you're supposed to take that. Obviously, the history of the Church is a lengthy history of... Um, seeking to find balance in that way. And you not only look at the um, uh, various monastic movements and asceticism and things like that, but even when you get into, um, the say, the Puritans after the Reformation, where you at least have a, a solid doctrine of salvation and justification, you don't have the suspicions and... and, and, and um, uh, silly stuff that you've got in Roman Catholicism from the Middle Ages, you've, you've got a reestablishment of a meaningful Pauline exegesis, but even still then, it's well known that certain of the Puritans, because of their very strong emphasis upon um, personal holiness, at times um, may have wandered a little bit back into some of the uh, legalism and... Um, and things like that. Finding that that balance is is not an easy thing, and you, you can't just simply say, "Well, it's it's up to each each individual." Um, it does tend to go with the with the church as a whole over a period of time, and so um, it, it would definitely seem that, for example, in the United States, I, I think there's a, a great indolence. I think there's a great apathy. I think there's a a love of the world and a love of our stuff and our things yep. that we uh, that we justify uh, very very much uh, and work on justifying. Um, but normally, what ends up happening is even when we um, correct that, maybe through persecution or something like that, the human tendency, you know, um, what's what's that Keith Green line uh, from that song? Um, uh, and and even when I'm doing well, help me to never seek a crown. Uh, for my desire is always to be pleasing to you. The whole idea being, you know, um, there, there, well, another line in the uh, Martin Luther heretic movie uh, was Luther was, was saying to someone, uh, and, and, even, and even if I do what's pleasing to God, do I not have ego about that? Am I not proud of that? Does not God smell my fear? Uh, so everything is always tainted, and the, the human... Uh, tendency is to move toward pride and toward um, using religion as power over others. And, and, and so you, and you, saw, you see that historically, almost every Reformation movement, especially when it's focused upon piety, ends up uh, going that direction. It ends up resulting in basically Christian Phariseeism, uh, just as, hey, the Pharisees started out great. First, he started out with uh, with Nehemiah and uh, and those guys uh, didn't weren't doing so well later on, but it, it took time for that evolution to take place. So, uh, yeah, those are the two. You know, if you've seen some of those, um, people keep sending me these videos of people who ride bikes in incredibly dangerous places on tops of high mountains uh, along these teeny tiny little trails that are like you know two inches wide or something like that. Uh, but that's sort of what we're facing. Is uh, you've got the you've got the cliff on both on both sides. Falling and off either side of the horse. Falling off uh, off either side. Yeah, that's that's what happens. Definitely. 
I appreciate that, Dr. White. Appreciate you. Okay. Thanks a lot, man. God bless. All right. Have a good one. All right.